slam unlocked. New weapon. Ooh, should have a look at that. Um, 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 um I think it w Javik would make sense. I, I quite like Javik as an idea. Um, obviously, not really had much interaction with him, but as the idea of Shepard failing, like this is a. Or Javik is almost a reminder of what can happen. Can we talk to you about anything? So much has been lost. So much has changed. And yet the Reapers are still here. Hmm. And I, I quite like just the idea that maybe Shepard's worried about... Oh, this is the engine room. What could be with regard to... He could end up like Javik. Just losing everything and just fighting the reapers just to give them a bloody nose basically uh, where was I thinking of going I was thinking of going to the war room we'll have a look see do you not have dialogue for that like voiceover All right, we have new email apparently new article on Eden Prime from Alliance News Network Information Partners. Alliance of officials confirm a local resistance movement to successfully push Cerberus forces off of Eden Prime. Cerberus attacked Eden Prime for reasons that remain unclear and set up facilities to occupy the colony. But after constant attacks from a united populace, Cerberus troops retreated. Alliance officials are sending in evacuation transports now to get colonists off world before Reaper forces reach the colony. We, th we owe this victory to the Alliance, resistance leader Edward Crabb said in a prepared statement. The people of Eden Prime have always been ready to fight, but Alliance Intel gave us the tools we needed to push those servers uh, off our planet. Many resistance fighters have said they plan to enlist to support the Alliance. Ooh. Oh, so I'm guessing it's along the lines of... We can't go that way, we have to go around the other way. Um... So I'm guessing that because we got all the intel, more of the forces survived, that kind of thing? That's my guess. Let's have a gander. Uh, Crucible? We got something new here. Ooh, Prothean data files. These Prothean disks were found years ago on Eden Prime, recovered a few months before the discovery of the Prothean beacon in 2183. For years, the data on the disks was incomprehensible until the Crucible's blueprints provided the key to understanding the equations. Locked inside the disks with theories on dark matter meant to be used with the Crucible's main power source. Yeah, so, okay, this is where we... If I got to 100% uh, EMS? What is it? Galactic readiness. EMS? What's that? Oh, no, no, I didn't want to do that. TMS. Oh, effective military strength, that's EMS. If we'd got to... Yeah, so if we get to 100%, we'd be here. Right, Alliance, what do we get? New ones. Uh, Eden Prime support, yeah. Eden Prime is an agrarian world producing millions of tons of food that is sold to less arable planets. The Alliance has set up supply lines from this colony to funnel excess provisions to its troops. A few re researchers who studied protein technology on Eden Prime avoided capture by service. They forwarded copies of their work to the Alliance, hoping it can help build the protein device. Although its military defences were seriously damaged by the Cerberus invasion, Eden Prime's remaining government has loaned the Alliance several Athabasca class supply freighters. Eden Prime's colonists drove Cerberus away from their system entirely with its shipping lane secure. The colony sending out as many supplies and equipment as it can spare. So this is because we've, um, I'm guessing because we got all of the, um, uh, the um, intel to them. Ooh, cool. Uh, right, where am I going? What am I doing? I don't know. Tech labs, but there's no tech, so I'm guessing we're not going to be doing research. Commander. Oh, what was I going to do? Oh, oh, I'm going to check the weapon out. See what, I, see what this new particle rifle thing is. Those poor colonists on Eden Prime. First the Geth attack, now Cerberus. For what it's worth, our new crew member doesn't need a translator himself, but he shared a Prothean language tutorial program. Okay. It was apparently designed hmm. for servant races being inducted into the Empire. Hmm. Charming cultural clue. Yep. Anything new? Tactical mastery. What's that? Probably stuff I should be paying attention to. Um, right. That's all done and read. And... Um... Probably should talk to people. 
I want to check out my new this new rifle. I say my new rifle, it's Javix, but Whoa! Oh, that's amazingly heavy though. Holds a lot more ammunition, fires a lot more. Does let less damage though. It's less accurate. We'll stick with the Vindicator at the moment. Hmm. Procurement interface. Buy shotguns, pistol, sniper rifle, and mods. How do I saw the Iron Man outfit? Power damage, power recharge speed. So we've got a few bits of pieces. Model Alliance, Kodiak. How do you use these? Do I have to go... Right, I'm trying to work this out. We've got mods. No, that's just paying for them. Do I have to go in here and do... Oh, I do... <gasps> Ooh! So I can increase that, which does more damage. Okay. Oh, that's just options. So if I don't do that... Oh, this is just... I've only got these. Okay. So you can only have two, so that does extra damage. I probably should have been using this. Okay. Do I have any mods for this? No. Do I have any mods for... Ooh, I do have mods for this. Shredder ammunition. Oh, that's bullets to pierce. Does less damage. But it ignores ammo, and that does extra da that just does extra damage. So I could fully upgrade that. But Yeah, I'm not actually I don't have anything there. And I don't have any modifiers. So hmm. Is that no, that won't be heavier. So I don't know why this is. Um hmm. No, I'm still using... I, I think I prefer having these and staying back. So I'll stick with those two. And these assault rifle mods. I have to open, press open store. Can't afford any of this. Ugh, no, cancer fabrication. Assault rifle stability. Increases weapon stability. <gasps> oh, that would be useful. I'm guessing there's no way to actually... Do I want the magazine to have more capacity or increased stability? We'll buy that, I think. So I could save it for the shiny... for the Black Widow. Hmm. It's going to be quite a way away, though, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, so that increases stability. I, I'd rather have something that decreases weight, but I don't think there's anything that'll do that. Yeah, let's add something to make it weigh less. They're called holes. Um, so this is my, my room. Looks a bit of a mess. Hello, boo. I'm back. Um, yeah, there's not much else to do, is there? Uh, at least not in the Normandy. Um... So I think I will uh, put a cut in here. I will, I will end the session here. Next time we'll go and do something, probably. I, I assume. Maybe the uh, this uh, service lab, if we can. Maybe the strike abyssal, wherever that is. Actually, let's quickly. Oh, I don't know. Let's see the surrounding area. Orbit. Is that only as off in Asgard? Because we've got all the assets here. We might as well head to Asgard and do a bit of further. Yeah. Further the last bit of however much time we've got left. This seems like there's only the one. Over here. Which is taking up a lot more fuel than I thought it would. Signal confirmed. Oh, pants. Is that going to drop down? Because I probably shouldn't do any more scanning. Eep. Bor is a hydrogen helium gas giant with over 90 moons. The light of ionized hydrogen filtering through an upper clad deck of sodium causes its striking coloration. 
The source of the ionization has not yet been confirmed, but Bohr's mass, equal to six Jupiters, and high temperature suggest it may be a brown dwarf, a gas giant that gained almost enough mass to ignite into a small star. The Reapers destroyed Bohr's extensive Helium-3 infrastructure, although wreckage indicates the Sixth Fleet did not give up the planet without a fight. Scanning. Oh. Around here somewhere. Oh, there we are. And we find... Something. Remains of a Reaper destroyer? Huh, I need to look at what, some intel? I need to find out what that is. Oh dear. So there's going to be a lot of things around. Tyr is compo compositionally similar to Earth, however it lies over 40 um, astronomical units from Asgard, so that's four times as far away from Asgard as the Earth is from the Sun, and possesses an atmosphere primarily composed of nitrogen and ethane. While a potential target for terraforming, the proximity of the shirt sleeves habitable Terra Nova relegated Tyr to a support role. Nearly 100 corporations, human and alien, constructed teleoperated mining, refiner, refining and manufacturing facilities across the planet. The Reapers immediately targeted these, seeking to cut off the Alliance's supply of hydrogen fuel cells. I'm sure that's what we're scanning for. Up here. There we are. And we find... We find... Alliance Naval Exploration Flotilla. This is the thing, is the Reapers... Oh, I'm guessing this is like where the Reapers are coming from. Do I risk it? Because... That sounds like a Reaper! Run away! Yeah, so... <laughs> run away! Run away! We have to jump somewhere, and I haven't worked out where we're jumping to yet. We'll have to think about what we're doing. But I, I, I'm going to see what, the, what these things we've just picked up are. I wonder. Hello, Private Westmoreland. Right. Uh, um, I wonder if that pops. I want to see what we've, well, we've just picked up. Two things. One of which is intel about something. Lights we picked up. The Naval Exploration Flotilla. In peacetime, the, Na the Alliance's Naval F Exploration Flotilla is used as a survey force to chart out new systems. The NEF came under fire in 2185 when several dozen service p people were charged with withholding information on rich mining deposits in order to sell the locations to the exploration firm Barrier Frontiers. The Alliance attempted to hide the controversy to little avail as more and more officers were indicted. Eager to bury its shady history, the NEF has dedicated its entire flotilla and material resources to constructing the, the Crucible. That's 75 points for towards TMS. More information. Yeah. So, even at full readiness, we wouldn't have enough. <laughs> yes, at this early point of the game, we don't have enough, even with full, <laughs> to uh, do the end game. Of course not. We have this random bit of intel. Does that like appear in my journal? Like, do something with it. Organizations. I. Oh, I should read these. Right, Service Atlas. With the Atlas, Service's research arm has combined the deadly arm armor and firepower of a Emir mech. That's what it was, with the tactical superiority of a trained human pilot. An Element Zero core allows the Atlas to be airdropped onto a battlefield with minimal impact damage. Its thick armor includes a robust, transparent canopy made from a polycrystalline composite pro proprietary to Cerberus. Alliance engineers hypothesize that the material is some kind of synthetic sapphire composed with interlayers, of resist interlayers to resist cracking and thermal damage. Although the Atlas is somewhat unwieldy, unwieldy in the field, its anti-personnel machine guns and ability to shrug off damage from anything short of a heavy weapon makes it a fearsome opponent. Heavy loss of life is to be expected in any un unprepared encounter with this unit. Yeah, we died like three or four times. Engineer. Service combat engineers are specialized support units that assist primary forces while staying out of the line of fire. They wear lighter armor than the typical service combatant, using a modified mesh that allows greater mobility. Under cover and out of sight, engineers focus on setting up and maintaining turrets as well as repairing mechanical units or armored allies. When confronted, 
They return fire only for as long as it takes them to find cover again and let frontline combat personnel take over. Although engineers are not particularly dangerous on their own, the Alliance specifically warns troops to remain alert for turrets, which turrets, which can mow down an entire squad while the engineer escapes. And the Nemesis. The Nemesis is a Cerberus sniper specialist. Customized implants allow the Nemesis to withstand the crippling kickback of the M98 Widow anti-material rifle. Uh, turning a redoubtable opponent into a force capable of inflicting instant death. A suite of high-tech scanning equipment makes the sniper adept at maintaining cover, meaning a nemesis is usually spotted only after opening fire, assuming the target survives the first round. Because of self-destruct mechanisms that activate upon the sniper's death, the Alliance has never achieved an example of nemesis augmentation technology. This fact, combined with Cerberus Force's penchant for suicide when faced with, with capture, has made scientific study of their implants impossible. Right. But, okay, so we've, we've got so we've got a random bit of intel. I don't even know what it's about. Brilliant. Yeah. Hmm. So no way to find out what this uh, bit of intel was. No. All right. I'm sure, we'll find out later. Hmm. You will probably kind of be posting where the intel is. That'd be very nice. So yes, next time we'll probably go and do the uh, this N7 mission first, and then we'll go and deal with Palavan, I think. Hmm. Unless something else pops up, which it might do. We got oh, the Strike Abyssal. Go looking for that. Yes. Uh, but that, uh, that all that will be next time. And I do really mean it. We're going to put the cut in here. So thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for watching.